All right, Gerald W. Brister here in Bakersfield at the uh, Pioneer Village Museum. Let's continue our discussion about the railroads and the pipelines. Been a controversy for years, contentions between them. You may not know that, but I know it. And the old timers older than me knew it for sure. Um, the big controversy in this country right now, you hear about Keystone Pipeline, Keystone Pipeline. Well, there's other pipelines in this country. And uh, we needed some environmentalism uh, some years ago, and I could get into a whole lot of that why. And one of the great fears is that the pipelines are just going to break, and there's going to be this terrible, terrible oil spill all over, and it's just going to be the end of the world. Well, even if it happened, let's assume that a pipeline ruptures, and we've got a pool of oil that is huge. It is not the end of the world, okay? But having said that, let me say this. Right now, your oil is being shipped a lot on rail cars. How many rail cars, how many train wrecks have you heard about in the last couple of years? All the time, it seemed like them. All the time. Railroads, a lot are subsidized. They don't pay their own way. But they're the big dog in the room. They've been the big dog in the room since years ago, okay? When you talk about lobbying power and this, that, and the other, it's railroads. And uh, so a lot of your oil is being shipped right now by something to me that is an inferior form of transportation. Pipeline work years ago, um, you would have blowouts sometimes, and mostly it was because there was a major manufacturing company in the early days making big pipe, large diameter pipelines. And they would have a welded seam. They would literally take steel plate, a sheet of steel plate like plywood, say, a long one. They would roll it, and then they would weld the seam. The problem was that it wasn't as good a quality as it is today. And a lot of the blowouts when I've been on pipelines and we pressure test them, we test them to one and a half times whatever they operate at, the blowouts would come in this particular kind of pipe. And it was made by a company called A.O. Smith. And uh, I've been on a lot of blowouts on jobs, had to repair them. It was old A.O. Smith pipeline pipe. And a lot of times it was at the end of the joint uh, where they trailed out. That's gone today. About 10, 12 years ago, I was uh, asked to be a inspector on a job and uh, turned it down. Actually, they wanted me to be a chief inspector because I never had been an inspector even before. It was during a boom, like I had talked about before, short of people everywhere. And so it was a great compliment. But after I uh, was there a couple of days for the training with about 200 other guys, I realized it wasn't for me. But while I was there, I heard this. I heard them talking about this 42-inch pipeline they were fixing the lay, and the question was asked about the seams. On pipelines, we don't line the seams up. They're always offset because of a possibility of a blowout. Well, this time, the guy said, we don't care where you put the seams. Now, he didn't mean that literally. We always want them on top in case there is a blowout. It's like a mortar round going off. It blows the dirt out of the way. You know where it's at, okay? It's easy to find instead of being on the bottom. But his point was that seams today and the quality of the wells is so good, and the inspection is so good, to me, they're 150-year pipelines. They're that good. The welding rods, the quality, the inspection is uh, incredible, and I don't have any fears whatsoever about pipelines just leaking all of a sudden and causing this horrific spill. Okay, so know that. Know that from a guy on the inside, I have seen environmental things not done right in the past, and I think those days are long gone, and I don't see any reason why we shouldn't be laying pipelines. I just signed up the other day for 798's um, petition for pipelines. I don't care this union, non-union thing. You know what? We fight inside the family. The Marine Corps makes fun of the Navy. The Army makes fun of pilots and calls them zoomies. The Airborne makes fun of regular soldiers and cause them legs because they got to walk. But when we go to war and somebody's attacking all of us, we come together. All you welders, union, non-union, need to come together because pipelining is the surest, safest way to transport our fuel. I'm Gerald W. Brister. Stick that in your head somewhere.